Hi friends, Shayla here. So I am here to do my comiXology tour. I've been promising to do this for a while, so I'm finally getting around to it. So in the app here, if we come up and go to my books, we'll get my entire collection here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me turn up the brightness. Just that's a little better. So up first, we're going to start at the top. It's alphabetical and we'll go down. So this is 1122 for a happy marriage. If you want a better look at the title there. This one is a Jose title. There is some cheating in it, so that is a trigger if you need it. Um, Comixology had a sale today, so I got volume one of Asahi Senpai's favorite. I'm very excited to try this one out. A lot of my friends have tried it and really enjoyed it. Another one that's kind of similar is... Atsumori Kun's Bride to Be Volume 1. Again, really enjoyed this one. Looking forward to reading more from it. So we have Beauty and the Beast Girl here. It's one that I chose to pick up digitally because it was just a one-off volume. I was really new to Yuri at the time, but I like having it digitally. I thought the digital format was really nice. Um, and then we've got Beware the Kamiki Brothers, Volumes 1 through 6. These recently got added to the Kindle Unlimited library, so I will be doing a rec video for that here soon, but it's a step-sibling romance and I really enjoyed it. Then we've got Can I Kiss You Every Day. This is a really sweet childhood friends to lovers kind of situation. There is a stepbrother who tries to meddle, which is really fun, but yeah, it's really cute. Then we have The Amazing Chihaya Furu. I only have the first five volumes of this. It's pretty deep in the series. And I do believe that Comixology or Kodansha added this to their um, Kindle Unlimited library as well. And we have Crocodile Baron. This is a really cute slice of life about a crocodile in a top hat being nice to herbivores because he's trying to not be a predator. It's really cute and I really like it. We've got The Dorm of Love and Secrets Volume 1. This is a really fun one where she's not supposed to be in the dorm that she's in, but nobody knows that. And she sees a boy sneak out, and it's about them entering a relationship. It's all sorts of fun. I do have Volume 1 of Drifting Dragons on here. I had gotten it for free, so it's where it is for that reason. I do have it physically, and I do think I'm going to continue to collect it physically. I have Escape Journey. This is one I don't talk about a lot on my channel. This is a series that definitely has a lot of problems in its first volume, but as the series goes on, it gets better, it gets stronger, and I do enjoy the final resolution on this one. It's got some dubious consent things going on. So if you don't like dubious consent, stay away from that one. Then we have Ex Enthusiast. I've got the first three volumes here. I've read the first two. It's really cute. It's about a woman who's kind of obsessed with her ex. She decides to kind of move on. And her ex is now at the place where she works. And so she's like in rehab. This does get sexy. It is a Jose title. And it's really fun. Then we have Guilty. This is definitely a messy darker title. It does heavily involve cheating, so if you don't like cheating, this is definitely not the series for you, but it's kind of like this weird love square kind of situation, so be prepared for that mess. Then we've got Hide and Seek. This was one of our Thirsty Thursday picks for 2020. Um, this is a really fun BL about a man who runs like a dime candy store and a doctor having a romance. It's really sweet. There's a bit of a single parent element to it, so I believe the live show in the corner for you guys to check out. Now I've got House of the Sun. I've got the first three volumes here. This is an age gap where they live together. So it's a bit taboo, forced proximity, some really fun tropes to play with. Then we've got I'll Win You Over Senpai. I've only read the first volume. I need to read volume two. So it's about the school hunk. And he has a friend who's um, a young man of color, which is nice to see in manga. We don't see that too often. And it's about this girl who is bound and determined to make the school hunk fall for her because no one has ever like told her no when she's asked them out, even though none of them stick. But she is bound and determined to get him to say yes. It's really a lot of fun. And then I've got Car or Care First Love. I'm not sure how you how most people pronounce it. I, I would say Care First Love because her name's Karen. And this involves like an idol model kind of guy and a normal mousy high school girl. It's really cute. I had a lot of fun. I buddy read this with Bizarre Individual. We had a great time with it. I do have Kiss Him, Not Me, the first six volumes. Um, the plus size representation in this is absolute garbage, so don't go into it for that. But we also have this really fun plot line outside of that. It's very reverse harem -y, so if that's not your thing, don't try it. But 
I really enjoyed the plot outside of that. So I'm going to try the other three volumes to see if the plus size thing comes around again. If it does, I'll probably stop collecting at that point. So I have Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. I have volumes two through eight on here. Originally, I thought I was just going to collect it digitally because I wasn't so sure after volume one, but I've ended up really enjoying it. I was gifted volumes five through eight here, so I just need to pick up two, three, and four, and then I will be current on the physical publish. Really quick here, we have Lady Mechanica. I picked this up on Free Comic Book Day, and I just haven't gotten around to reading that one yet. And then I've got Let's Kiss in Secret Tomorrow. I've read the first volume, need to read the second. This is about, like, childhood friends. The guy was dorky, and she was popular in junior high, and they kind of reverse roles once they hit high school, and so it's a really interesting dynamic between the two of them because they keep their relationship a secret. Then I've got The Lion and the Bride. I either got this one for free or I checked it out through Kindle Unlimited. I can't remember, but it's giving me Beauty and the Beast vibes, so of course, you know, I'm here for that. Then we've got Liquor and Cigarettes. This is a really fun BL. I think eventually we'll pull it into Thirsty Thursday because we've all enjoyed it so much, but this is about two childhood friends who enter into a relationship. Um, the guy with the dark hair is on page bisexual and this guy's just kind of figuring out his feelings and stuff. So it's really sweet. I really liked it. We've got Living Room Matsu Nagasan. I do have the first six volumes digitally because this was a digital first title. Now that it's going to be releasing physically, I have not been picking up the other digital volumes because I want to collect it physically because I love it so much. So this is one where I won't be picking up any more digitally, but that's only because it's releasing physically and yay. Then we've got Love Massage Melting Beauty Treatment for my smutty friends looking for smutty things. This is going to be a fun series. It is complete at seven volumes. I just need to pick up the remaining three. And in this one, it's about an off like a woman who's looking to relax in life and she ends up hiring a massage. What she doesn't know is that it's erotic massage. It gets very sexual very quickly and they end up in a relationship. It's really kind of fun. Um, this is another new one I picked up. This is Love's Reach. I don't know too much, but it looks like a blast. And then everybody recommends Lovesick Ellie to me like crazy, so I finally picked up Volume 1 because, again, that was on sale today. Then I've got The Maid at My House. I think I checked this one out either from KU or I got it for free or really cheap, so I'm really excited to try it. Then we've got My Boss's Kitten. This one is complete at seven volumes. It's done publishing, but I do need to pick up the other three. This is definitely strong power dynamics, so if that's not your thing, this title won't be for you, but it's an office romance. Then I've got My Boyfriend in Orange. I have the first eight volumes. I know it's continued publishing. I just am not current on it yet, but this is a firefighter in a high school romance. He's like in his early 20s, so it's not like super icky or anything, but it's just really interesting and still very pure, at least as of volume eight. My Pink is Overflowing. This is one that I was obsessed with when it first started publishing. I think I'm behind on the publish now. But in this one, we have a girl who is pervy and has a thing for guys in white collared button up shirts. And she has a crush on her manager and she is bound and determined to get him to give her his virginity. And so it's just a really fun play where the girl is kind of pervy and the guy's not so much. He's very much like a pure little bean and a sweet soul. And I just adore him. And we've got Our Fake Marriage. This is up to volume five in the publish, I believe. And in this one, it's childhood friends where they end up in a fake dating relationship. I'm really excited because it seems like the guy has been pining. So it's going to be a fun time. And we have Our Precious Conversations. I am one volume behind on this one. This one did get added to the Kindle Unlimited catalog, so I'm excited for that. But in this one, we have two adorably shy high schoolers interacting together. She had a crush on him. She told him he was very brusque with her and says, why would you put your feelings on me? Anyways, it's about them getting to know one another and entering a relationship. It's really sweet and really cute. Then I have the first volume of Peach Girl. I have not read this yet, but I hope to read it soon, maybe for the Manga Love Readathon coming up. And then Peach Heaven. This is one I don't hear many people talking about. This is a 13 volume series in which we're following a girl who writes smutty romances under her dad's pen name because he's passed away and their family still needs the money. Anyways, she sees this idol guy like getting it on with the school nurse. And so she writes about it and he finds out. And so he blackmails her to bring him lunch every day or he's going to tell everybody. Anyways, he's just really interested in her. And it's a really fun romance. I really like it. It's kind of messy, but a lot of fun. 
Another one, if you're looking for something a little pervy, this is Peach Mermaid, where every time she gets aroused, her mermaid tail comes back, even though she's on land. So it's an adventure. Then I have Perfect World. I have all nine volumes. I adore it. I am collecting it physically as well. And yes, there is some ableist tendencies early on in the series, but we end up um, having our characters grow and understand one another a lot better by the end. It's really great. Then we have Practice Makes Perfect. This was our Thirsty Thursday pick for January. Our January picks always tend to be strong and our favorites. And this one was adorable. We have two virgins who are athletes entering a relationship together. They're, they're adorable. I love them. Then we have Queen Bee. This is a shoujo title in which we have a girl who looks scary and then a popular guy, she ends up rescuing him for various things because she has a crush on him. And it's cute and awkward and adorable, and I love it. Then we have Ran the Peerless Beauty. I know at least Volume Seven's out, possibly Volume 8 on this one. This is one of the cutest art-wise mangas that I've read. And it's also a really sweet story about two people who meet in high school and the relationship that they enter together. It's really sweet. It centers around flowers. And Ran is a lot like Komi, so if you like Komi's character, you'll really like Ran in the Grey World. Ran in the Peerless Beauty, not Ran in the Grey World. That's a different series. Then we have the elusive Red River, which I pray every day we'll get physical publishes for. This is an older shoujo title from Viz Media. I don't know if we'll ever get physical, but man, I pray for it all the time. This is a series in which a Japanese woman is transported back in time, I believe, to Egyptian times, and she ends up being in love with a prince and it's amazing and a little bit sexy and then we've got smile down the runway this is a very fashion centered series i have volume one and volume three for some reason i haven't picked up volume two um i need to get on that i think i accidentally bought the wrong one is what happened <laughs> but anyways if you like fashion this is really great and the art is stunning in it the clothes look fantastic then we have Spell of Desire, which is a complete five-volume series. I chose to collect this one digitally. This was our Thirsty Thursday pick for January of last year, and we really loved it. It's fantastic. I've got a few of the ones that I picked up just recently today on the sale. We have The Tale of Genji, Dreams at Dawn, Volume 1, That Blue Summer, Volume 1, Those Summer Days, Volume 1, to Be Next to You, Volume 1, which I believe is the same mangaka that did That Blue Summer. The art styles look pretty much the same. Then I have To Write Your Words. This is a Jose title in which a dentist kind of helps this writer who's hurt her hands write her erotic romances. It's really sweet. I really like it. There is an interloper guy in the middle, but I really like the two of them together. Then I've got Vampire Dormitory. I am behind on the publish on this one, but this is... Um, vampires at school. He's a vampire. He needs a thrall because he doesn't eat well. And he ends up drinking from this person who he thinks is a boy, but it's actually a girl dressed as a boy. And so it's about them and their shenanigans together. He's a total nerd and otaku, and it's a lot of fun. And then I do have this um, chapter from X-Files Origins. Again, I got it for free comic book day and just haven't read it yet. And then I've got You Got Me Senpai Volume 1. And this is one of the new ones that I got today. So friends, that is my entire Comixology collection. Let me know in the comments down below what you have on your Comixology or on wherever you buy your manga and maybe I'll end up trying it. And if you're interested in more details on any of these, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to do dedicated reviews for any of the series that I've already finished. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.